Hello to all of our BPTV fans, YouTube fans, and Facebook fans, plus the new fans watching us. I'm Alan Levine, The Talking Machine. I co-host and co-produce Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. And we do have a special guest today, a woman that I met here in our studio in 2018, 2019, and I've admired her ever since. Elder Terry Shields, founder and executive director of Jada House International. Welcome, and we are so excited to have you here. It's I'm been a while. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I thank you so much. And we're gonna, we can talk while we're painting. We want everyone to know the wonderful things you're doing for our communities in Pittsburgh. So well, thank you for having her on. I've yeah. heard of Jada House and I'll have yes. a couple questions Amazing. for you. Yes. Because I'm inquisitive about women power. Yes. We love strong women. We love to promote Absolutely. strong women. And that's so, why I'm outnumbered yes. two to one. I know, it's good. <laughs> Let's go. Right. So because of what Terry does, she inspired this design that I created. This is from the West End Overlook. And, but she's a Pittsburgh woman. She grew up in Hazelwood, right? Absolutely. Still there. And uh, this is a um, view from the Western Overlook of a sunrise in Pittsburgh. So that's what we're going to paint today. All right, so we are going to get started here. So we'll grab, we have transfer paper underneath your design. You have a pen there. Yep. And these there. come in the art kits if you get the art kits at the studio. Otherwise, I just have the list of materials and I also have a 10 minute video that goes with each show to just teach you to draw this on your own. It's easy enough to do. So we are just using this though. We're just using our transfer paper. Oops. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Just It's just a guide, just follow the lines, but then just remember to move the transfer paper. You can kind of see it through the paper and you don't have to transfer the pickle. He's just there. For, I was ready to, He's just there for inspiration. We use our little pickle pointer. My pickle that says Heinz on it, which I love, and pickles. I used to can pickles with my grandma. She used to grow them in her garden. It just kind of reminds me of her. So, and then the little shrubs, again, when we do this little shrubby area, you, you don't have to pay too much attention to exact, uh, the exact lines there either because our paintbrush will make, create the design for us. So I'm just doing these lines here. And when you paint with acrylics, typically, well, you usually paint from the back to the front and the layers are on top of each other. But because we only have an hour or under an hour, we're just doing this in a different sequence with the layers of paint. And it still works fine. But um, if you had more time, you could paint the whole background first, the sky colors, the, ba the base, block that all in, and then do your layers on top. So there are just different ways to create your painting. But the acrylics dry really quickly, so it works. And I think, and then I usually pick it up and just make sure I have all of the little spots. Okay. So we're using white, purple. This is a fuchsia or magenta color, yellow and black. You can also mix different colors of your own. You can use um, different variations. This is just, um, you know, the colors that we chose for this. And I did do this, uh, I did, um, I was inspired by a photograph that uh, actually a lot of my friends are um, Pittsburgh photographers, and this is one of their favorite spots there at the uh, West End Overlook. So this was from an actual photograph um, that I was used for ins inspiration, the clouds, and I had taken one myself with the clouds in that formation, and I thought that was really pretty, the way the sun comes up behind the uh, city. And Maria, so. growing up in Green Tree, right next to uh, Parkway West, yeah. Uh, it was five minutes from my house and West End Circle was about seven or eight yeah. minutes away. So I know right where that is and I've seen that over my lifetime because yeah. I moved in Green Tree at two years old. Wow. So and Terry, now you've been in Hazelwood forever, right? All can, my life. Can you see this city at all from where you are or no? Um, I don't... Hazelwood Green, you can. Okay. Yeah, the new okay. um, 
where the steel mills used to be at. Uh, okay. They re renovated that area, okay. and it's beautiful down there. You can nice. see the I city. I saw it. I was just down yeah. there recently. I remember the mills. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. No, I'm glad to see that. Me too, because I use it. Yeah. So Good can for you, you. Tell, uh, tell us about Jada House International? Jada House International <laughs> started in my home nine years ago, because yeah. next year we'll be celebrating okay. ten years. Nice. And we started with a group of women, and we started to talk about chronic illnesses and children who were incarcerated, mothers who had to deal with those types of things, okay. and just the community at hand, what we could do to bring some programming to the sure. community. Yeah. And I would cook meals. Nice. I mean, really good meals. And um, Tell me one of your meals. One of my meals might have been lasagna, one of my meals might have been Alfredo, chicken and shrimp Alfredo. <laughs> that just, is my son's favorite. Just, just, you know, just cooking meals. And we would fellowship around the meals and talk more. And I guess we became popular, I want to say, by the meals. Okay. And people, more yeah. people start coming. Yeah. Well, people do like to eat. And they yeah. like to eat. So that's a comfort thing. So they mm -hmm. would come and they would eat. And these and we, were free meals. They were free. Everything was free. We didn't have a 501c3 when yeah. we first started. It yeah. was just coming out of my pocket. We did that for a couple of years. And my grandchildren were staying with me, two girls. And they would help me set up every Monday night. Okay. And they asked me, could you do something like this oh, for us? Kids. That is so great. And I said... Absolutely. And I'm working a full-time job. Working what kind at, of work were you doing? I was working at UPMC Health Plan. The health plan was working there. Nice. And um, they asked me, would I do something for them? And I said, absolutely. So I picked a day, which was Thursday. We would do Thursday teen night with girls, and Aww. we would do Monday with the women. Okay. And I would cook for both, wow. both parties, Mondays and Thursdays. And plus work. Oh my goodness. So we did this. When and then, did you sleep? I know. <laughs> so one of the ladies said, why don't we do something in the community, like give away book bags and school supplies? So I said, sure. Where are we going to do that at? My backyard? Like I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> open, really open to it at first. So we didn't have any money. We all pitched in and we bought school supplies and we got donations and we went up to a little park, a spray park okay. where I live at. Yeah. And we did it. We just gave 35 book bags Aww. away. And, um, we continue to do that. So I thought about the seniors. So yeah. we do an annual senior luncheon where we serve seniors. Way to and go. And we give a entertainment nice. and guest speaker. And then, So this has really been growing. And I'm sure yes. that's made such a difference in their lives. Absolutely. And, and, just, and then just this, the um, getting together, a sense of community, connecting that's what each I want, other. The unity and the mm -hmm. love and the, and the fellowship yeah. is nice. Yeah. So we continue to do it on and on. And in, in 2014, we finally... 2016, sorry. We finally got our 501c3. Okay. And we went from 35 book bags to 500 a year. Wow. And we do wow. a annual um, celebration, school back to school celebration. We do the senior luncheon every year. We serve them. Bistros that goes my favorite. And they, okay. they, they cater to us. And um, it's nice. a catered meal. And then we have a guest speaker and live jazz. Nice. Seniors like jazz. Wow. And we give away gift cards. And then we do a Christmas thing, give away toys. And That's amazing. we just do it over and over again every year and like i said next year we'll be celebrating 10 years wow. and i can't believe it's That's just awesome. time just flies well when we met we met you i so our f mutual friend lori yes. shout out to lori i love lori hi lori i know <laughs> so i was doing murals in lori's home and beautiful she, murals yeah thank you i'm i'm sitting there painting i was probably on the floor you know painting and and she said i have this friend and she works with teens and kids and does all these great things and which maybe she could bring a group of her kids up to your studio and I said absolutely so you came I'm going to say maybe six or eight about kids. eight mm -hmm. yeah that was 2018 I believe and of course I loved you as soon as I met you and everything you've done and um, admired you since and just just kept in touch with Terry and and kept up on what she was doing and when we were having the show and I knew we were going to have some special guests I said she's one on the list I definitely need to uh, get in touch with and so we I called you up and you said yes so here we are <laughs> so it's great I'm just yeah. honored to be here I, I was like thinking like wow she really remembered me oh I remembered you you're but one I of those people the store. That, yeah yes, I remember the art studio but you just you I was just so um amazed by what you had done the the selflessness then the the care and love for just you know if everybody did a little not that everybody has to start a 501 exactly but just maybe just
just uh, maybe be kinder to some people you don't know. Everybody has a story. Everybody's going through things. And just don't be afraid to reach out and talk to people and meet people and maybe get together for look just a little thing, a couple women, and look what you've done and helped thousands of people. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so, surreal sometimes. So yeah, how could um, I forget you? <laughs> yeah. uh, so, a mutual admiration And now we're painting society. together. I know. This so is amazing. It's great. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get started. So we'll take, let's put your paintbrushes somewhere up here off of, because we're going to use this, our, our palette here. And we are going to start with the background. So as we mix the colors for this background, instead of rinsing the brush and going back in, I like to blend the colors right on the brush and mix them kind of on the canvas. So we're going to start with a lighter color at the horizon. And then as we add the pink, we'll get little tones of maybe some orange in there because the pink will mix with the yellow. We can add some white. So that's what we're going to do there is start. So let's grab, I would say we're going to grab the half inch uh, flat shader. And I usually put the brush in the water first just to keep the bristles uh, together. And let's see, I'm going to grab the yellow. And when you load your brush, I'm going to do this like this. When you load your brush, you want to flip it back and forth. No smooshing, right, Alan? Yes. No smooshing. No smooshing you here. Want to keep grab, it flat. Yes. And then you can, you can test it on your palette too. Just kind of work the, the paint into the bristles. And a generous amount of paint. If you, as you're starting to paint, if you, it starts to drag a little bit, then uh, you don't have enough paint on there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lay our brush. You can lay, if you lay it this way, you can use that corner. And we're just going to come in and just come along the horizon. And then as you need, you just then work your way up. So you can see, and then I'm laying the paint, laying the brush flat. And just cut, just basically blocking this in. So we're going to come all the way across and then you can turn but you see how I'm using just the corner to get in those little areas? And then when I have this vertical line, I'm just holding my brush vertically. And we want a gen generous amount of paint on here. Once I'm, I come in, I come across and I have it blocked in around the buildings. I'm going to keep in mind the cloud formation because I want my brush strokes to follow those patterns. Now you can, if you're going around the buildings, you can even pull, you could see if you pull the paint across our transfer line, you can still see through it. So you can even cover it up a little if you need to. And then Thanks that for way, that tip. Yeah, and that way you don't even have to worry about getting in there so tight. So what I'm doing now is I have this blocked in here, all of the yellow. I want to start to transition from the yellow to the pink, but I'm going to pull some of this up just kind of like this in the direction where, uh, in the direction of those clouds. So I'm not going to rinse my brush. I'm actually putting a little bit more yellow on the brush and I'm going to put the corner of my brush in the paint but I'm just doing that at the edge instead of sticking the brush in the center of the and paint. You're and you're going into the red? The, the, the pink, yes. Yep. Yes. So what I'm doing is mixing those two colors. I'm just going to mix it right on the canvas. And what I'm doing is I'm introducing that color and pulling it back into the yellow and blending it so that it's a, it's a transition from the yellow to the pink with some of this more like a an orange or a coral color just kind of do something like that and now here you can smush the brush down a little bit to give you some of that cloud the cloud shapes and then where the this color that I just mixed comes down into the yellow I want to soften that a little bit so I'm just using a dry brush technique so I'm taking that extra paint off of my brush and just softening where they come together. And if it got, if it did get a little too dark, I can always add a little more yellow. Just throw a little bit of yellow back on there. You just want that transition where they come together to just blend. And then from there, I'll go into laying in more of the heavy pink. 
But yeah, you're good there. You just, yep, you can just pull that around. And I'll come back in and help you with your painting if you uh, have a question again while you're moving well, I along. Did. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> you're good. We're doing our best and, here. And I would say, you know, don't be afraid to leave. Like the paint can have some brush strokes in there. It, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. You know, the brush strokes in here are what make it interesting. But you could see now I'm just going straight into this, this pink, beautiful pink color. Maria, I didn't yes. copy any of the leaves, which I see there. No, so we, de we didn't. We, we didn't. wouldn't so do that. So just for, leave, yes. yeah, your paintbrush yes. thing. Thank yes. you. We're just doing just that Just checking with, with our, you because I'm yeah. putting yellow around where I see it. No, when you paint the, no, we're, so you want to go into, um, so from the yellow, go into the pink now. Okay. And keep that yellow on your brush. And then you can see where I have them blending together. Yes. And then if you need them to blend a little more, just add a little more yellow. Yeah, I need to. So I would start above the yellow and then come down into the yellow. Okay, above and then go down uh, yes. into it. Then right. Because the paint is going to be stronger initially because you have more paint on the brush, the pink. Oh, I see what you're doing. And then as it tapers off, it will be a little lighter. And, you know, we don't have to make it look exactly like it does on this picture. I was trying to follow your lead and guidance here, but you're, <laughs> no, you're, you're doing, tweaking it, you're so I appreciate good. that. Yeah, and the, um, the so we have some purple in there too, but as it comes down, like I said before, you can change, just go with the flow. Your clouds don't have to look just like that. So I'm taking off, so now I want to blend where I have this brighter pink coming into the yellow. And these lines are okay. I still want to soften them a little bit. So I'm just taking that extra paint. I'm not using water. I'm just taking the extra paint off on my paper towel. And then you'll see I come in and just soften just a little bit. And you can have some of those harsher lines in there too, but that's okay. So you have that color there. And as it dries, I'm probably going to come in and add a little bit more of that pink as well. You can add some white if you want a little bit of a lighter pink too, but I want to keep it very strong. We get these very beautiful colors with these, some of these sunrises here at Pittsburgh. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going above and painting all along the tree. Don't worry about where the leaves are going because we want these colors when you would ask about that. They'll we actually want be the, underneath Yes, them? we want okay. those to be in between the leaves. I needed your guidance. So I would say Me grab a too. little bit more pink and get that up under that tree. And then you need to blend them while it's wet. See where your yellow and your, your orange are meeting? You need to blend them like now before they dry. So I would take some extra paint. Oh, that looks good, Terry. And then if you want them to just blend a little more, you can just add just take less, have less paint on your brush, okay. a drier brush, okay. and you can even add just a little bit of yellow and kind of mix where they come in together. Okay. And that just helps transition the, the colors. You kind of want, and they create their own shade also, or hue. So you could see now the pink, I'm just laying in more of that pink. And then the purple will come in on top of that because that's a little darker. And we're, and this will dry by the time we're done working on the city and the other areas, this will be dry so that our leaves can go on top. Now this pink seems a little bit more translucent, so you can see here, so I'm purposely, I'm flipping my brush back and forth. It depends on the paint, how opa opaque it is. This one is not as opaque as the yellow. So I'll just leave some of these brush strokes in here and that's fine. So yeah, I added a little bit of white there. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to throw in some purple. The purple, I'm going to keep it all the way up at the higher, the edges of the canvas. Like here, I'm going to do here, and then I'll pull a little bit down here. That looks really pretty. So the clouds, um, depending on the direction you have them, it could be the way the wind is blowing, right? Yes. Um, comes all different directions. I mean, our, we our weather comes from the west here, but sometimes it changes too. And that, so I'm grabbing, I just grabbed purple and I'm putting, let's see, we're gonna do a little bit of purple and I'm putting some white, just a touch of white in there. Some of that yellow is still on my brush and I'm just pulling that in. 
So just have fun with it. It's your sky. No, no two skies are going to be the same, right? You don't have to make it right. look like mine. Just this is your painting, and just see. But your purple's up near the top, right? Yeah, because it's usually the sky is brighter at the horizon, whether it's a sunrise or a sunset. The horizon is is just brighter at the horizon. Okay. The sun is the so that's why we have the yellow down there. Now with art, you know, you could do your own thing. You could certainly reverse it if you want. It just wouldn't be. No, I want to um, follow your lead, co-producer and co-host. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, they look good. And then the tree, um, as you paint it. it, I would say just paint that all pink and then you just add your, okay. that section. Okay. Um, because the, the black, the I tree will it. be one of the, well, the tree will be one of the last layers because we're doing that background first and everything is going on top. So those leaves and the tree, they're in the foreground. And when you have a scene such as this where you want to create some depth, the reason the tree is up front and, that, and then it kind of pulls your eye back over is that that does give you that sense of dimension here. And the, the city, as you can see, is softer in, in color and the hues are a lot lighter because of the aerial perspective. So in the distance, in the fog in the air or, or uh, you know anything that's in the um, atmosphere everything always looks a little less detailed and uh, paler as it's in the uh, distance so foreground middle ground background with your layers that creates depth in your artwork so we can see the the size of the brush is pretty close to the buildings so i can use this brush for most of them and then for the smaller ones i'll just grab one of my smaller brushes now we are going to mix um, a gray, but not a, um, I'm gonna put some purple in there too, because I want it to still uh, pick up the hues in the sky and then the little foggy uh, shrubby thing above the, the shrubs that we're going to have. So whenever you're mixing a color and you're using a light color, dark color, always start with the lighter color and introduce the dark color. If you start with the dark color, you might end up having to add so much of the lighter and just end up wasting a lot of paint. So I'm going to put a generous amount of the white and I'm going to take a little bit of the black, but I'm putting the black next to the white and I will pull in the black as I need it. Now that's pretty strong. So let's see. Now I feel like it's a nice gray. Acrylics also dry a little darker. So keep that in mind so that the, the, the tone, the shade that you see, it will get a little darker here. But I feel like the gray just by itself, it's like, meh. So Are I'm gonna the put same some- brush? Yes. Okay. So let's so start with your white, put some a generous amount of white, put a lot of white on your palette here, introduce a little bit of the black, but what I'm gonna do is add some purple. Whoa. Because the purple will make this a prettier gray. Gray doesn't just mean black and white, it could mean many colors but well it's, there's it's, different shades of exactly. how dark things are right? so and also it could be a warm gray a cool gray and then add a little bit of purple it just makes it a prettier gray all right so now I'm coming in I'm laying my brush the edge of the brush you can see I'm resting it on the canvas and I'm just laying that brush down and the bristles will spread out and I'm just pulling my hand and this is the horizon line so we don't want it to be a straight line Kind of wavy because you know it's the hills and buildings and then i can grab my corner my brush just grab put that up there so just lay the brush down and you so terry look if you let the, if you lay your brush down and you spread the bristles out oh. your it controls your hand a little bit because the weight of the the brush is on the canvas now i'm just coming in the square sections or the rectangles. You can see that the brush itself is be, is making the shape of the building. Yeah. And if the building is narrower, then I'll have to use a smaller brush. But you can see I'm able to get different sections here. Then I'll come over here. And these aren't going to be very detailed because they're in the distance. But that purple, you can see it's it's a gray, but it just has that little bit of that purple hue and it just looks pretty. That looks good. So you can just, so for the, the smaller buildings, we're just going to come in with a different brush. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to kind of blend this down here. 
I'm not worried about going all the way up to the shrubs. I'll just kind of pull that down like that. Throw that in the water. And now I have a smaller. Uh, this is my quarter inch filbert. If you have a quarter inch flat, that's okay too. I'm just using this one here. I don't even think we have that. I didn't even pull out the flat quarter inch flat. And I'm just using that on its side and coming in and blocking in. Anytime you're filling in, just blocking in these paintings. And I'm leaving, you can see sometimes I'm leaving in a little bit of the white in between so I could still see where these buildings were. And then you can turn, so you can turn your brush the shape, the size of the building, the bigger building, like this. So you can just, just put one brush stroke and just pull it down, yep. And let the brush do the work for you. And so that's it, we're coming in, I'm just filling this in. And just then I'll come in with my smaller brush too. Do that, and then I have a very small round liner brush and or detail brush and whenever you add paint to this brush you always want to hold the brush in this direction so that it does not mess the bristles up either and, and I twist it a little add a little bit of water to keep this flowing nice I'm twisting the brush in my fingers to create that nice little point because I need that point to do the little the PPG building, right? Looks like a little glass castle. Do our little. I'm usually heavy handed. I'm going yeah. smaller <laughs> brush on the PPG. Yeah, sure. Definitely. I have to. So I'm going to come in. So again, this is very simple in the design. I have some little yellow highlights. So while this is still wet, I'm going to mix a soft yellow. Now I'm going to come in and pick out some of these edges of the building. We'll see how this mm -hmm. looks. Mm, I feel like I'm going to add a little bit of pink. So it's a sort of a golden yellow. And I'm just going to highlight the edges of these buildings with my little brush. And again, we're not putting in every window or anything like that. This is just a suggestion of where the buildings are so that it just gives it a little interest here. And I could, you could see I'm pulling down some little spots here. You guys are so quiet today. <laughs> You're focused, huh? You're yeah, focused. this is very intricate for yeah. me. It is. This is a lot of... But it's good, it's good. Yeah, just fill that in. And you can leave the, the, the lines where the buildings are, you can leave a little gap there so that you still know where they are. And then you come in with your little highlighter. And then I'm also putting a little highlight just here and there on the horizon. Maybe there's the sun is reflecting on the trees or buildings. And sometimes you see like there's still little lights on. I know I could see that from my house in between the other houses I can still see like little little twinkly lights in between and that's all and as this dries and we can come back in and see if we need any little shadow or something I might want but um, yeah that looks good so mm. I just yeah, fill that in and then just leave the lines in between so you can see where the buildings are but you want to block in with the gray and then I would say you could even add a little white or purple also just so all the buildings don't have to be all the same color um, I feel like mine are a little, yeah, they're, they're drying okay, but I feel like I need a little definition in between. So I'm just going to mix, I just mixed a little bit of that purple and gray, and I'm just, you could see if I just pop a little in between, and that just shows where they are. And then that fog, we have a lot of foggy mornings here. And um, sometimes it's really pretty. The fog rises. It's yeah. around the city. And then you see, I can see the steel building, PPG and all the different ones. And, it, and it's like the, the castle in the, in the sky. You know, it's very, yes. very magical looking. So, so I just did, you could see there. So that's all. And as your paint dries on the palette, if you add a tiny bit of water, that will reactivate your paint. So I need a little bit of that 
Thank you gray. for that tip. I was wondering. <laughs> well, I needed a little bit of that gray. Again, instead of trying to mix it, I just introduced a little bit of water on my palette. And then you could see here, there's still some white around my buildings. So I'm coming in with my little brush. And this is probably the most difficult part of this painting. It is a little more intricate, but they look real. Oh, I like that. Nice. And just do, you know, keep do it whatever way you see fit, however you want to see your colors. Just try to keep them a little lighter, which they are, because the tree will be really, the tree's in silhouette, so the tree's going to be very dark with a little highlight on it. So did you ever go up there to the West End Overlook? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been beautiful. there too. Yeah, and this is, I think, um, some of the news channels, I know they all, they'll have the images from the that viewpoint too, but that tree, I'm not sure. I need to go, I think it's a maple. I'm well, not that, sure. Well, that Dave DeCello does these yeah. paintings pretty strong, and yeah. I think the friend that you guys yeah, have. Yeah, JP. Well, yeah. I must admit, this, well, JP Drill, um, he is an amazing photographer as well. Yes. And he uh, has one that, um, I have a picture of it in my house too, and that. Oh, really? I, wow. Yeah, I have a small, a little, um, I think a coaster of one of his. And I, I see it all the time, so of course that influenced me as well. So both good photographers. A lot of um, well, I people appreciate... make a living with Pittsburgh, right? Even John, right. well, you can see some of John was working yes. here. People love Pittsburgh, they love the skyline. If you've ever been here and you travel, you still want everybody to know you're from Pittsburgh. Exactly. And, um, it's well, really great. Well, I appreciate great. your themes each each month. Yeah, well, and like I said, oh, Terry's a Pittsburgh girl and uh, doing really good things yeah, for our city. And I feel like that inspired, yeah. she inspired what I thought we wanted to paint. So. Right. Thanks right. for yeah. volunteering, Terry. One woman can make a difference. I appreciate you. I no. appreciate both Yours of you is guys. looking great. <laughs> they look really good. I love it. I love it. All right, I'm going to move on with the fog. So let's <laughs> see. Um, we are going to use, hmm, because of the fog, I have it um, a little rounder. You can see in here. I'm going to use the brush, the half inch shader, but it's curved. It's curved, or it could be referred to as a filbert brush as well. So that's, you can see that. And what I'm going to do is make a very soft gray, but a little more, I think I'll add some pink to it, a little bit of pink to it, because it would be the sky reflecting kind of in this fog too. And we're going to put that above the shrubs. Now we might end up, I'll probably end up, oops, you're good, uh, painting over some of the shrubby parts that we drew. And that's okay because we can add those. Are you ready for your fog too, you think? You I'm ready it? for you. The, this one, but it's probably in your water. A little bit bigger. Well, I used that accidentally, that yeah, half round one. one. Yep. One. So yeah. what you're going to do, are you guys okay with your palette? Do you need a clean one or anything? Yeah, fine. No, you're I'm good, good once okay. I get rid of this one. So we're going to start with white. Generous amount of white. So you can see I did a couple. Yep. Little. So the white, and then let's add tiny, tiny bit of black, just a little, I'll put it off to the side and then pull it over. A little bit of black. Ooh. See, it just, it's so strong. It just really, when it starts, when it, if it's too strong, you just go off to the side a little bit more. It is strong. And then I'm going to pull in some pink. Yes, a little bit of this pink. So it's like a soft gray pink color. I would say probably go over into the white more. Keep it, you want to keep it, no, like just mix it over here. Okay. Yeah, and like, so, yeah, there you go. And then add some pink to that. And because we want this to be a soft pink gray, but then we also want to be able to highlight it a little bit more as, as it dries. So I'm coming in and I'm laying the brush this way. See that curve of the brush? And I'm just moving it up and down just kind of pouncing it on the canvas because we want that to have sort of a little. Can we cover the shrubs up then? Or? You, you probably will end up covering them and that's fine. Well, I can try to leave some detail for Well, them. I would say just don't worry about the shrubs. We can add that. And most of mine are getting covered anyway. Okay. And so I- And you just keep dabbing it like yeah, you're Yeah, just doing. kind of dabbing. So you can see like this, this direction. Yep, so you want the brush 
this direction and so that the curve creates your little part and just kind of pounce pounce the brush and just do some elevated areas lower higher and so this is going to dry slightly darker and so I basically cleaned off my brush on the canvas but I want to make sure there's no more I'm not putting it in the water I'm just taking that extra paint off my brush and I'm adding on just the white so my brush is still a little dirty and that's okay because I don't necessarily want it to be a true white and I'm coming in and I'm just going to highlight This I was still, much more intricate than I yeah, thought. Yeah, no, it's good. I would say try to keep it a little lighter up at the top. And then as it's drying, I'm still putting in some of that pink. So I want a very, very light pink, white with the pink. And as that dry, that's drying, I'm coming in and just tapping just the top. We're not going over all of them. Again, just the tops of where we want some definition of like those layers. So you can see there. Now in the design, it's more pink. I still think I want it more pink. A little more pink in there as that light is coming in from that sky, kind of hitting that. And I'll see how it dries. We got to keep that sun in focus yes. from the left, mm -hmm. yes. right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab my half inch flat shader. Okay. We could make sure all your cloud, well, make sure you're, you finish your, yeah, take, you don't have to worry about keeping up with me. Just, you know, finish your, your fog. You can see I'll put some highlights on there. Okay. And I would put some, some white, use white. And I use, put a little bit of pink in there. Cause you can take your time. You don't have to finish okay. at the same time as me. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just have to keep it going, you know. Good. So Terry, you take I'll share time. this. Being a sports guy, I'm normally competitive. Maria told me to take my time. Take your time. Okay. All right. We'll make sure you finish. I just have to keep it going. But well, you're we're guaranteed to finish, Maria. Yes, <laughs> always finish. Just had to add that in. That's there. right. We will finish, Terry. That's right. <laughs> now the shrubs, I use. I'm using my half inch flatter. I want that to be dark in silhouette also, but I don't want them to be as dark as this tree. I still want that tree to be the darkest. It's in the foreground. It's in shadow the most in silhouette. So what I did was I made a softer black. I took the black and I added some purple. So it will appear to be black or in silhouette, but it's still again, not as harsh. And I'm coming in very simply. You can see I'm flipping my brush. I'm holding it like this and I'm just creating that illusion or suggestion, if you will, of shrubs. Okay. Uh, it made a big difference. I just tried it, so thank yeah. you. And I'm just flipping, like I said, I'm just flipping the brush. And as it comes down to this area, I have that line. It's the walkway, I guess. I think there's like a little fence in there, but we're not putting all that detail, that fence. <laughs> we got too much detail yeah. today. Yeah, and then the right. same thing. Yeah, we're good. And then I'm um, a little bit darker, stronger black. I'm edging this here. All right. And then I have a gray. So I'll add a little bit of white. Still, I didn't clean my brush. I just kept all those paints on there. This is a little lighter here. Okay. And then continue that here. And then I have purple in here because why not, right? <laughs> There's purple in the sky. We want to repeat some of these colors that are up above so that it doesn't look so boring. We're having taking artistic license here. Hey, there's nothing boring here, yeah. Maria. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to throw some pink in there, too. I have some pink and purple. And I'm wow. pushing. You can see I'm pushing my brush up like this, almost like there's maybe some little grasses there. And then I'm coming in with my softer black. And I'm finishing this all the way down the edge of the canvas and then I'm going to take my little round brush and mix my highlight like we did the highlight on the buildings I want a little highlight like that Sun is hitting my shrubs and I'm just going in the same direction as I painted them with the larger brush but I just want to pick out 
some little points here. Now highlights when you're all done. I, sometimes you have to go back in and add a few more once your painting is finished or almost done. So I'm just doing that right now and I'll take a look when I'm done. Oops, I have a couple. And we can adjust as we go along like you're saying, yes. right? So we have our little highlights uh, on our shrubs, but we'll, we'll check those again after we block in the tree and the leaves. You guys are good there. Yep, and you can make those a little bit darker. And if you grab the brush and hold, flip it this way, if you hold the brush this way and then this way, and you just kind of rotate like that, you see? And then you move your hand around. Okay. Kind of gives you that a little, little bit of a shrubby look. All right, so I'm grabbing now, I'm using just the straight black because we want this tree to be in silhouette. We want it to be very much darker than the rest. So, so clean go. the brush, then go to black? Yes. And you'll see now those colors that we used in the buildings and the sky, they will look softer and lighter because this black is very dark. But that's in, it's in silhouette because the sun. And what brush do I use for the tree? I'm I still, still have using that the rounded, same. I have the rounded half. Um, you I can go? use the half. You can use that one or the, I'm using the big flat one since I had that for my shrubs. Oh, that's straight half? Yes, the okay. flat. Yeah, that's flat. Half inch. Mm -hmm. All right, just check it. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm pulling down. You can use either either one, Alan. So well, I'm, I'm just I'm taking your guidance. Okay. All right. And I'm just <laughs> pulling that down. Here. I can't do what you do, but I'll take the guidance. Right. You're doing great. And Thank then you. I'm pulling my up here. So what do you have coming up? Anything with your your um, kids or seniors? I have a uh, Seniors Going Strong coming uh, April the 15th okay. at a Community Kitchen in Hayeswood. Oh. How do they get a hold of you, Terry? Um, they can call, um, well, they can, you call, uh, <laughs> they can get in contact with me through my email address, yeah. datahouse833 um, yeah. at gmail.com. And we'll have links on our, yes. on our show, cool. too. No, I just wanted it out there as they're watching and painting. Oh, definitely. Pique their interest a little bit because sure. I'm interested. That's that's great. Yeah, April the 15th, uh, Saturday from 12 to 2, we'll have... Uh, and seniors, where is this again? Hazelwood. Okay. Seniors Going Strong at Community Kitchen. That's 107 Flowers Avenue. Okay. And it's an RSVP, so you would have to email me and um, if you wanted to get on the list. And then we have our senior luncheon coming up June 3rd, and we have special guest Tubby Daniels, who is a jazz band. And, I've heard of him. Oh, yeah. Um, he'll be uh -huh. performing, and we have a guest speaker. And we'll have a catered meal from Bistros to Go. That's June the 3rd from... 12 to 3, and we'll be giving away gift cards as always. And wow. um, nice. that's what's coming up. And then eight, August the 19th is our back to school celebration. That was my dad's birthday. Yes, that's my aunt's birthday. Wow, and it's a, a back great to day. Yes, Aaliyah. Um, Saul was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in the Hill District like I was. Oh, okay. His okay. family grew up on 105 Pride Street. My dad grew up, up there too. Court. I know where Pride yeah. Street is. Yeah. Yep. Mercy Hospital yep. took the grandmother's mm -hmm. house and made it their ER. Wow. You go right okay. up Pride in the ER, that's where the house that's was. That's where the there. house was. Wow. I was born there. That's my claim to fame. You know they're still reconstructing up there. They're the always road. working yeah. around there. <laughs> yeah. But um in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> August the nineteenth is our back to school program and that's from two to five and that is in Hazelwood Green at Mill nineteen. Oh, okay. Nice. So that is what's and coming up. Where are they located at in Hazelwood? In Hay um 4165 Lyle Street. I like addresses. So yes, 4165 Lyle Street. That's good. Uh, thanks for providing that's great. that. And that's great stuff you're doing. So you need the RSVP because they're feeding you. So you need to know how many people come right. there. Right, exactly. Just exactly. to explain why. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We have to um, get have a count you know, for the food that we're serving. Now, for the senior luncheon, we do have an RSVP. But for the uh, community um, back to school program, we don't. We just make well, sure we have Well, you're the boss. If it works for you, we're not going to complain. There Sarah. you go. Right. All right. right. No, that sounds great. And to your continued success. Yeah, Thank you. That's Thank awesome. you. All the trees coming. They're coming pretty decent. Do you guys, can we do like a, just a quick show the cameras, like your progress? And then we'll. Uh, yes, yeah, as soon as I get flip? this part of the branch, I'll so try. They can see mine. Not done yet. All right. No, but it's just the progress. I'll show You're some progress. There. I'm getting That's there. It's looking good. Yeah. You look good. Okay. 
Thanks for your help, Maria. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So I have the tree blocked in with the black, and you can see how it's really making a nice contrast here. I did hold my brush. I'm using the same brush for the smaller branches. You can see here, if you hold your brush like this, you'll get a, a thinner Maria, line. Maria, you taught me to do that yeah. edge. Look it's at what all, I did. Great. I it's great. It yep. There. And then for this, so what you want to do is throw in. We had the tra we transferred the design, the, the basic shape of the tree, but add some branches. You don't have to put them in the same place as mine are, but just add some branches just to break it up a little. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did for the shrubs. We're going to use the same brush. And we're putting black in on those or black. And then we're going to block some of those in, but then I'm going to add some other color too, just to give the, especially the leaves underneath. So uh, a little interest there. So I'm going to put some leaves here. Now, what you want to do is make sure, you can see I'm flipping my brush and I'm not even pushing it all the way down. If you push it less, you'll get a smaller leaf, but try to keep some of the sky color in between the leaves, okay? And that's what's going to make it interesting is you don't want to cover up all that pretty sky that you just painted. So I'm going to put some leaves, I would say, along the top edge of the canvas, try to get some and of the leaves. And you're using black on that? Yes, just the black. I'm blocking them in, but I am, I'm not covering too much. I'm going to leave some spaces and then I'm going to grab Well, I'm usually heavy other. handed, so go lightly on that. Yes, you can see here, if I just, just, just kind of use the corner. I'll use that dab brush. word, just a little dab. Yeah, a little dab will do you. Yes. And then just flip the, flip the brush, rotate the brush in different directions, kind of like puzzle shape or just kind of move it around because they're leaves, you know, they're, they're growing in all different directions. But they're little, I have them a little heavier here. And then you could see I'm leaving that sky in between. So what I'm doing here, you could see I'm, I'm just using the corner, I'm just flipping. See if you just go like this. So you just move, yeah, you can practice on here. I think you need a little bit more paint on there. So you can practice, you can just See how you can move it around? Just flip, oh, okay. move the, flip the, the brush back and forth, the, the corners, and then your hand. And that looks pretty good there. I feel like I might want to come down. Then I'm just taking the extra paint off on a paper towel, and I'm going to, I'm going to grab some purple and yellow. I'm not sure what this is going to look like yet. And I'm put grabbing. it over the leaves? Yeah, so I'm just going to hit this is getting exotic. No, see, it just, <laughs> you can see, so I'm going on top of the leaves and I'm going beside the leaves and just hitting, just here and there, just breaks it up a little and it looks like that sun, that sky is illuminating those leaves a little bit. You oh, see that? Oh, I see what you did, yeah. You see there? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just put it on the left side there. Well, yeah. Or just close. kind of, and under the lower, the ones up at the top of the canvas I leave, darker because maybe the light but you can see I'm just kind of hitting the leaves and then I'm going to take my little round brush again and I'm going to put some highlights just here and there along the trunk of the tree the branches and eh, I think there might be a little too much there you could always add more black if you don't like it so I just doing this a little on this side you can see I'm just kind of laying my brush down and that brings that tree to life a little bit there and then I think I'll grab my brush and just do something like this some little wispy wispy stuff grasses again that the light is picking up and then I'll just kind of look at everything if I, I feel like maybe I don't like this here. I'll throw a little black back in there. If I need a highlight, um, maybe just pick out a little yellow here and there, and maybe a little white, maybe a little highlight here and there. And that's pretty much it. That's, I think my, and then the grass is too. Maybe, I think maybe some white. But you can add pink. Let's add some pink down here too. Let's add some pink. Make it colorful, right? Yeah. <laughs> See how I'm putting, I have the brush at the edge of the canvas and then I'm just lifting it up. Oh, wow, that is unique down there, yeah. 
looks great. Yes, right. it does. Yeah. So I think I'm done. Maybe add some little. Let's see here. I'm going to add a little bit of white on my. So you want your little fog. Yeah. Have your little highlights there. Add a little bit of pink in there. I think that's it and I might let it dry look at it later you can always do that with acrylics you can always come in and add a little some little details or highlights or shadows that's what's nice about the acrylics just add those little dots so how are you guys coming I'm good the I only thing good. I have a question is with the little grasses and things yeah what brush do I go okay, to? okay so that? I used the little round brush Okay. And when you do the grasses, I just put the brush down on the canvas, and then you pull and lift up. Okay. Just like that. So this this brush here. Little round, thin like a liner brush. Oh. Uh, yes. This one. Yes. yes. Now I'm. So as it. you push down, it creates the bottom of the grass, and as you pull, you lift up. And what are you up. making? It's green then. Um, I used purple. I used black. Oh no, we don't have green. Mm mm. No, we don't. Well, <laughs> and we can't make green either. Yeah. No. So I use black, yellow, pink, purple. Just do different colors. I use different okay. colors. Black, yellow. Because I wanted to repeat some of those colors from the okay. the sky. Well, I'll try to do black, yellow, and then purple. Sure. Just yep. Just lay the brush down, and you want to create some that the black under the tree. You see the tree here. Yeah. You want to get some, uh, you need that tree to be rooted in something and sitting on. Uh, so you need to bring that tree, the black down. All the way to yes. the bottom. It, and oh, I Give it that. some interest because the tree, it just kind of, you just don't want it to look like it's floating. Uh, you just want to read it. So I, I'm i done with mine. I'll probably look at it later and see if I need to add anything. Uh, we're going to finish up their paintings and, and reveal those, right? Yes. But we're going to finish yours and... Um, so you can see this on BPTV, you can see this on our YouTube channels, and uh, mine is Maria's Ideas Art, and the BPTV has the uh, YouTube channel as well, and we also have the list of materials and supplies that you would need to uh, create your own, where you can mm. get the art kits from the studio, but we have to pre-order them since I can't have all of the art kits for all the, the episodes here at all times, but uh, just Understood. a day's notice or something, yeah. And your kits are just great. Yeah. So, so anyway, so yes, we have we have everything here. Like I said, maybe look at it as it dries, pick out some highlights and shadows, but it's the West End Overlook. If you're ever in Pittsburgh, you've never been there, it's a great vantage point to see the city. So I'm going to see how my friends are doing, my fellow artists here, oh. and then we will show you their paintings. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your help. Yay. Yes, thank you. Oh, see, you got a style. See, people don't know you have a style <laughs> until you start doing it, right? <laughs> I love it. Just do your thing. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we are done with our paintings. They look great. I hope you had fun. They are fabulous. We all. Have I had too style. much fun. <laughs> no, it was great. Fun? Yeah, this was nice. Good. Was all really right. Nice. So let's let's flip them around so we can see. I love your. You have a lot of energy in yours. Alan's is great too. I love it. Very nice. Thank you for joining us again for episode four, and we can show the next one. I don't believe we have a special guest. It's just going to be Alan and me. Ah. And we are going to paint a happy bluebird for springtime in May. Yes. So, ah. yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for Love having, having me. Love having you here. Thank you for having bye -bye me. Bye-bye, okay. and check out Yay. all the information at the bottom. Get your kits and follow along painting with us. Look, my fourth painting, I'm excited to do number five.